<laughs> yes, Mopo. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy right now. I'm so happy. Um, what's going on, Warriors? Doctor Strange movie review. This is gonna be a spoiler-free review. Movies, Godlike man. I'm, I'm, I'm hyped, man. I've just watched the movie. Absolutely fantastic film. Um, the way they talk about reality, the spirit world, the mystic world, the dark world, the astral world, um, Doctor Strange's origins, transition to him becoming a master of the mystic arts. Fantastic. Believable. Human humour. Fantastic. The human relatable humour. It's good. The action, fantastic. The displays of the mystic arts and magic, incredibly done. Um, being fantastic, but still being grounded in reality and believable in reality. Incredibly adapted. The script, wonderful. Absolutely wonderful script. Some of the best scenes in that whole movie didn't even have no special effects or magic in them. It was literally... Um, Doctor Strange talking to um, the antagonist Kaecilius or Baron Mordor talking to Doctor Strange or the Ancient One yeah, talking to Doctor Strange those are like some of the best scenes in that whole movie but the whole movie was incredible the pacing, fantastic the film started it had a good ending it had, basically it had a beginning, a middle and an end it was good pacing, excellent scripted fantastic pacing the movie literally, to be honest with you, felt like 40 minutes, even though it was obviously a long film, but the movie was so good, you just, you want more. Beautiful movie, recommend you go watch it, give that film a 9.5 out of 10, and yeah, thanks for watching, thanks for, um, if you subscribe, thank you, if you like, if you share, really appreciate that, and yeah, just stick around, I've got more videos coming, thanks for tuning in. Yeah. That about does it for the spoiler free review. So now I'm gonna go in. We're gonna talk about the movie, full review, spoilers, everything. Right? I'm not wasting any time, man. I'm getting straight into this, Warriors. It's good to be back. So, one thing I want to talk about first of all, right, is the movie addresses a very controversial topic, something that has been within society but hidden in plain sight, which is called the knowledge of something called the pineal gland, um, the all-seeing eye, the third eye, the, um, the seat of the soul, the spiritual eye. Um, it is a thing called the, a pine cone is symbolized within society you see it in um, the staff of Hermes um, in Osiris um, where else will you see it the pine cone you see it on the Wimbledon Cup the Wimbledon Cup has got the pine cone um, basically a lot of like Illuminati um, establishments or religious symbolism will have the pine cone because essentially what the pine cone represents is closed pineal gland it is a state where humanity is in a state of closed um, perception of reality you cannot perceive the true reality of the world you see this everywhere as I said um, you have the all seeing eye which is when it is open you see this in the American dollar bill. You see this in um, the Egyptians, the all seeing eye, which was um, originally from Babylon. The scriptures from Babylon. You see it, and um, it's just like an eye which is like that, and it's got like an eye like that and that. And that's essentially because if you cut the human brain open and you see where the pineal gland is in the center of the brain, directly behind the eye, you will see like a little grain of rice that's what it looks like the pineal gland and essentially that allows you to perceive the true reality of this world there is a certain chemical substance that it will emit called 
DMT, dimethyltryptamine. And dimethyltryptamine, you will naturally experience the full power of dimethyltryptamine three times in your life. Number one, when you're born. Number two, when you are in 13 weeks of being in the womb and at death. So we pretty much don't really experience it in our conscious, knowledgeable life. But there are ways of triggering small quantities of dimethyltryptamine, DMT. And uh, yeah, the experience you have from DMT, I've never experienced it. But I do a lot of research, I do a lot of homework about this kind of stuff. And basically, it can you cannot describe the experience of absorbing dimethyltryptamine. You can't, because you are pretty much seeing from within the reality of the world. And the reason I say from within, I'll give you an example. When you close your eyes and you open your eyes, at no point do you see the world upside down. You never see it upside down. But the actual way light is projected into the cornea of your eye is upside down. The brain processes it the right side up. Like right now when you're looking around, everything is upside down. But it's actually flipped around by the way the brain interprets the world. Think about how quickly the brain has to do that. You don't miss a second. You feel like you don't miss a second. But the human eye can only detect up to what is it 25 frames or 30 frames something like that all this kind of stuff with like 4k and 8k and 12k your eyes you cannot actually even process that amount of data you cannot process 4k in real life it's impossible the reason 4k and all that kind of stuff exists is essentially for when you zoom in like when you have a picture and you take a picture in 4k it's so that you can zoom in and you still get a very detailed bitrate picture. You get the, all the details even when it gets blown up. That's essentially what 4K, 8K, 12K, what all these kind of Ks are. Okay, so now we get on to Doctor Strange and why that's important. Because Doctor Strange is a guy, he's a, he's a, a, neuro, a neurologist, right? He basically can cut people's brains open and he's got like beyond laser precision accuracy when performing operations yeah he is he studies he does his homework yeah he is a genius right or a technical genius because all his a lot of the work that he does he actually is handpicked he has a hundred percent success rate in saving lives because he handpicks only the jobs that he knows that he can do so it is the fact that he is actually godlike is kind of like an illusion but he is godlike he's a very egotistical and a very selfish man and he always strives for greatness that is he doesn't want to accept that he's not great it's his strength and his weakness the fact that when he had the car incident where his hands got destroyed and he got nerve damage where his hands are like shaking right the whole reason that he wanted to go to seek out the ancient one and fix his hands because he so that he could return to the normal world and be a neurosurgeon because he loves money he loves having the success but he doesn't love people like you'll see in the movie when he saves somebody that gets shot in the head the people the, the family of the big person he saves they try to hug him and he gives them a fake hug because it's not about that life he's about the adulation he's about the success he's about the accomplishment he's about i can do that i know i can do that i'll do it and i'll know i'm going to be rich from it that's dr strange but he is like me not the greatest believer in humanity look at society right now testament to that but when he sees a human being with empathy that they show a capacity for an incredible amount of compassion and selflessness. It's intoxicating to Doctor Strange. It's so fascinating to him that, that P 
people actually are like that in real life, right? And that's what keeps him going. Because, you understand, he's not a defender. Defender, they deal with... The, the me defenders in the Marvel Universe, def they deal with domestic issues. Avengers, they deal with intergalactic, incredible, fantastic shit. And then you have people like Doctor Strange that deals with the otherworldly, with the cosmic, with the mystical, with the magical, with the um, astral plane world. And that brings me back to DMT, dimethyl tryptamine. Essentially, what this drug does, what this chemical that the human body can emit, it actually allows the human body so say this is the human body and this is the spirit body it allows the spirit body to separate from the human body and then the spirit body can actually travel into the astral world which is a plane be that is in between the physical world and spiritual world and also that is the pineal gland is something that allows the human body and the, hu the basically human being to harness the power of knowledge the truth of the world, magical abilities, mystical abilities, psychic abilities. The human body is all capable of this self-healing. You can make your body self-heal, you know, and all that kind of stuff. The human brain can trick it into doing that. That's all to do with the pineal gland. It is. And you see a bit in a movie where Doctor Strange is trying to process the fact that science means nothing reality as we know it as you're watching this video as you look at your computer or your smartphone or your tablet or whatever you're watching on your xbox or your ps4 whatever pc whatever this is a stage of reality stage one and there are thousands maybe even millions of stages of reality that we can't see dimethyltryptamine dmt allows us to see some of those realities but we can't comprehend it we can't perceive it we can't understand it it's beyond our understanding it's beyond our our knowledge it's beyond our language there is no human language in existence that can describe what somebody that is under the influence of DMT sees it's impossible and that Doctor Strange embraces that in the mystic arts in the astral world in the dark realm where Doctor Strange fights Dumamu and yes Doctor Strange fights Dumamu in this movie and the fight is fucking godlike the reason it's godlike is because it is fucking comic books what makes Doctor Strange so godlike yeah is the fact that when he fights against entities like um, Spiral like um Dumamu Kibesa Kibesa de Fuego, yeah, the firehead, yeah, um Shomogaraf, Thanos. When he fights against all these type of people, he can fight these people, even black car, and fight them on an the even playing field or beat them. Not because he's more powerful than them, because most of these guys are more powerful than Doctor Strange, because Doctor Strange has got no abilities of his own. Right? He is fucking smart. He can use artifacts, yeah, to beat people because he is so smart at using abusable things to beat more powerful people. It's like I'll give you an example like Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, the cards, right? He can beat somebody with a ridiculously broken ability, yeah? And he can have a weak deck, but he can organize his deck in a way where he could use a weak card to exploit a slight weakness in a very powerful card. So, yeah, it's like that, man. Like, like an ability where, say you've got like a godlike powerful card, right? And the godlike powerful card has got 7 billion HP and um, 800 MP. Doesn't matter because the HP and the strength is the HP and the strength is off the charts. The MP doesn't need to be powerful. But then Yu-Gi-Oh could find a card that switches MP with HP and strength. 
So then the strength becomes MP, and the HP becomes MP, which is only 8,000. And the strength and HP becomes the magic points. But the ability, the card, doesn't have any magic ability, doesn't have any magic skills. So it becomes useless. So you can actually use a very weak card to beat that card because he's flipped the MP, HP, the strength and HP with the magic points. Technical things. Doctor Strange can do that. And yeah, that's what makes him godlike because he, he, he does things like that where he's really, really smart at exploiting weaknesses or using technicalities to beat people or using an artifact that isn't that strong in a normal situation but you can pick it out and make it strong it's the film is godlike man like the human humor the human relatable human humor in it is good the like the the um, humor when it comes to like relationships and stuff like that well like when he's like when he loses the abilities of his hands and the woman says there are other things to live for you can and he's like what what else is there to live for without my work what you woman <laughs> Come on, man. And then that bit was like, for me, hella funny. Hella funny because at that moment, he just killed that relationship. That relationship was dead and dead. Yeah. You know what I mean? And just stuff like that, man. Like the jokes that they made in the movie. Like the, the humor was good, man. Like when you got the cloak, you got the cloak of levitation, which was his artifact. The cloak of levitation was fucking sick, man. It was so cool. It was like pretty much that was his flying carpet. That was his buddy. You know, um, the sanctums, you had these sanctums that protect the human realm from the dark world, Dumamu's world, which was London, New York, and Hong Kong. Those were the three sanctums in the world that protect the world from the dark world, the dark realm, which um, is the, dark, the world that Dumamu controls. And yeah, the cinematography is actually fantastic. Like a lot of it looked like a little bit like um, I kind of say like shaky cam up, shaky cams from far away, but then zoomed in. But the it's, the film was good, man. Like visually, the scenes, the scripts. As I said, some of the best scenes in that film was not even the fight scenes. The fight scenes were incredible. The way they there was like the mirror world. Like you see when you see the world folding in on itself when they're hitting the floor and all that kind of stuff. That doesn't actually happen in the real world. That happens in the world that they that they create called the mirror world. In the mirror world, anything you do in the mirror world happens in the real world, but it doesn't affect the real world. You can't actually fold reality in the human world, but then it gets scary because a guy called Carcilius starts to be able to do that kind of stuff, right? Because he's harnessing the power of Dumamu, right? And that's another thing that was a bit strange for me is because you saw like a character called Baron Mordor, right? He basically is normally Dumamu, Baron Mordor, Carcilius. But the way they did this movie was they had the Ancient One, Doctor Strange, Baron Mordor, then you had Caecilius trying to break down the world for Dumamu because essentially the ancient one was hoarding godlike abilities from all the other sorcerers, all the, all the world and the other sorcerers, which is basically the ability of infinite life been around for thousands of years and the way the reason and the way the ancient one was doing that was basically taking the abilities that sorry power siphoning power from the dark world the marble's realm to basically keep herself alive and this is one of the reasons that Caecilius rebelled against the ancient one so in a way the ancient one was doing it because there has to be a supreme one Right, because then um, basically have the Sorcerer Supreme, but the Sorcerer Supreme is a bit of a tricky one because you only normally get the Sorcerer Supreme rank if you have the Eye of Agamotto. Ancient One never had the actual Eye of Agamotto. She never used it. She basically, the re when she was godlike, it was from her power. It was from her ability. Yeah. And that to Eye of Agamato was an Infinity Stone. It was the Time Gem. You know, a Doctor Strange was able to 
harness it and use it because he's so smart like he studied a lot he did his research you know and as I said before I like the way he never healed his hands because the way, when his hands are shaking it was like a constant reminder who he is now if he fixed his hands because it would have been a selfish act because that's what he come for originally because he wanted to go back to the real world that's not his world anymore the real world's not his world anymore you belong to the world of the mystic the cosmic arts that's where you belong now Doctor Strange. The Ancient One touches Doctor Strange's head and he goes into like reality of the world which was p pretty much triggering um, the pineal gland and just explaining that to us and little hints of who he is that he actually kind of was saying he's a fraud because um, he only took jobs when he was a neurosurgeon he only took jobs that he could do but um, so it kind of created the illusion that he was absolutely godlike and he didn't want to accept failure right but that's his strength and his greatest weakness it's fascinating stuff man like when you just kind of like study like what's going on in the world and then you watch Doctor Strange again you just think to yourself these guys are too godlike man so yeah man movies are godlike man I give that game a 9 out of 10 9 and a half out of 10 easy you have to watch that movie it's absolutely fantastic um, there's two secret endings to that movie. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's two secret, uh, um, two secret endings to that movie. And yeah, I just hear what, hear what you guys got to say about the movie. Um, what did you think about the Eye of Akamato um, being not being the um, what makes somebody the Sorcerer Supreme, but more of it is the time gem. What did you think of the scene where basically he reversed time and he slowed down time actually. He reversed time but he reversed time in slow motion in order to fight Dumamu. And um, he tracked Dumamu in the time loop. The way he basically, basically he beat a god of a dimension by trapping him in a time loop. Incredible. What did you think about that fight? What do you think about the humour? What do you think about the martial arts scenes in, about, in it? The interpretations of the mystic arts? Um, what do you think about the interpretation of um, DTM, dimethyltryptamine? You know, the, the um, astral world where Doctor Strange projected himself into the astral world and was fighting Zaylox, um, which is um, played by Scott Aiken. Yeah, I just want to hear what you guys got to say, to be honest with you, because the movie was fantastic. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, if I missed anything, please let me know in the comments, because so much in this movie to digest. I'm sure I missed a lot of stuff. And, um, yeah, man, just, yeah. You saw Dr. Strange's, he had the yellow gloves. He had the gloves at the, by the end of the movie. Um, yeah. Yeah, Dr. Strange, man. Wonderful. Loved it. I uh, want to hear what you guys got to say. So I'm going to sign off now and reply to you in the comments. Later, Warriors. <laughs>